In the future, your computer will be just as alive as you are. And that future starts today. Anthony here for DNews. Slime mold. We've talked about this, Physarum polycephalum. It's a slime mold that exhibits a lot of the qualifications we have for something to be intelligent. It's pretty amazing, check out our last video. But now, researchers from the University of the West of England found out that they might be even more amazing. They might be a building block in the creation of living computers. So here's the deal. Computers have these components called resistors. They regulate the flow of electricity. They're the bits that switch between zero and one and help the computer carry out calculations. A computer has millions or billions of these things, all switching back and forth depending on what electrical charge is running through them. A memristor is a resistor that can remember the position it was in when you stop running electricity through it. Think about that. A computer that when you lose power remembers exactly what it was doing and instantly goes back to it. That is way more foolproof and energy efficient than anything we have now. So the problem with memristors is uh, they don't technically exist. Some are in the works, but nobody can show anything off just yet. But enter the slime mold, the beautiful, efficient slime mold. You run voltage through it and it reacts. It sort of braces itself. And it does it in the same amount for the same voltage every time. And it remembers the last voltage that went through it. It stays in that position. A single celled, naturally occurring memristor. Pretty nuts. So why not use it in computers right now? Well, it's a living thing. It's got a lifespan can't be in a permanent computer, but you might remember that P. polycephalum is very adept at pathfinding. It actually finds the shortest, most accurate route to food or other survival stimulus. The team thinks they could put metal nanoparticles into the slime mold and then let it draw out circuits before it dies. Imagine a cave that needs lighting. You put the mold in the darkest part of the cave and it grows out, finding the most efficient route to the surface. And when the mold dies, you've got all the wiring you need to efficiently light and power that cave and monitor brightness. Why do we want to do this? Why do we want living computers? In the last few months, we've seen a lot of them. DNA was used as a hard drive. MIT made these tiny computers inside cells that use sugars as a slide rule. Researchers used a few human neurons in a Petri dish to control a power grid. What do we get out of this stuff? Well, those neurons calculate electrical grid needs faster and more accurately than our current network, and they're super cheap to make. All this stuff is. We get computers as small as the ones we make now without the exorbitant costs of manufacturing them. Living things are resilient and self-replicating. A tiny, single-cell computer placed into a human being could help control and regulate health problems at a genetic level. Eventually, we could have inexpensive, self-repairing systems running everything on our planet and keeping us in optimal health. Or a spooky, super intelligent slime overlord that controls us from inside our bodies. You have to admit that both are pretty impressive. How do you feel about biological computers, internet? I say bring on the wetware. Let me know down below and subscribe for more D News.